Do you want to know why? I need a pasta. He found Racer Johnson enjoying a last summer splash last month, just before he starts second grade. Mom Donna is nervous about the coronavirus, but eager to get him back in the classroom. I was really excited about them going this year because he, he really need, he's getting older, so he really needs like interaction with other people and stuff. But there's something she didn't know about the 1950s era elementary school her son attends. Tai Park's HVAC system, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, is rated poor according to state records. Wow, I'm, I'm bummed because I really like the staffs over there. I really like the school. The old HVAC system is housed in the roof and doesn't meet today's standards. In this database, several Tai Park Elementary buildings rate some of the lowest HVAC scores reported to the state, a .30, a poor rating at the bottom end of the scale. Carolyn Upshur teaches in classroom number two in one of Tai Park's poorly rated buildings, but didn't know about the HVAC rating measured just last February. Not that I know of, yeah, because this is my third year at this school, and I've not heard anything. Data we got from the State Office of Public Instruction shows 787 school buildings across Washington that received poor HVAC ratings. With the COVID-19 pandemic, how important has school ventilation and HVAC systems, how important has that world become? Well, it's huge. We've said that from the beginning. Um, we need more ventilation. We Nancy more Bernard we is the State Department really of Health expert um, who advises school districts on environmental health and safety. More of the outdoor air improve the filtration. Those have been our two messages. They've been our message from the beginning. They've just gotten more solid. Here's why. A COVID-infected person spews droplets, which face masks and social distancing may block. However, a sick person also sends smaller aerosol particles into the air. A robust ventilation system sucks up those infectious aerosols and filters them out. The state says most school buildings built after 1991, when new building codes took effect, have adequate HVAC systems. They should be able to open their outside air dampers, clean up their systems and improve their filtration. But older buildings may not do that because of their poor HVAC systems, especially in lower income districts that don't have the money to upgrade. An important point about this database, it's a pre-pandemic rating system. It's an overall evaluation of a school building's ventilation, which may include things like the heating system, which really isn't relevant to the spread of COVID. But if your kid's school gets a low score, you'll want to ask questions. The only way you're going to know is to ask your school district and you need to go to the school facility people to find out what they are doing. Health officials say don't panic. Many school districts have many temporary improvements that may not be reflected in the OSPI database. Things like opening doors and windows for airflow, adding portable room filters and consulting with building engineers, as Clover Park School District says it has done at Tyee Park Elementary. The school district and Pierce County Public Health declined on-camera interviews, but the building is safe, the district said in a written statement to King 5. I don't think I want to have him go back to school just yet. When we left Donna Johnson last month, she was undecided on the return to the classroom. Could things improve? And yeah, absolutely. But school staff say they'll do everything they can to keep kids safe. If I feel safe, then I think that my kids will be as safe as well.